so modeling unsteady flow. So um, let's talk about Hammer specifically. So what is Hammer? So obviously it's software for predicting hydraulic transients. Um, it's been around for a long time, uh, 20 plus years. Uh, method of characteristics uh, is what it uses, as we talked about before. Um, it's built to be user friendly and such that you can pretty quickly get up to speed and build models um, you know, very, very, very fast and get results uh, pretty easily, which you'll see in the, in the workshops. Um, it's also been validated on some, you know, some break investigations. It's been compared, uh, Hammer's results have been compared to, uh, you know, published data and other things. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's proven, it's solid, it's stable, uh, it, it's a great tool. So uh, what can it do? So, um, you know, you can understand what causes the water hammer and how to protect the operators and the equipment. So you're looking at, um, you know, being able to visually see where the problems are and quickly assess, well, let, let's try this and see what, what effect it has and let's try that and, you know, very easily try different things and see the impact to see which ones uh, might, might help. Um, obviously, hammer in the end of, helps you avoid pipe breaks and service interruptions, wear and tear, um, other risks. Uh, you, you're able to correlate break records uh, on transient results. Uh, you know, basically plan things in advance so that you know. Well, if, you know, if we have to take a tank out of service and we close this, we got to make. We, you know, we have to make sure to, you know, do, you know, close the valve slower or or whatever it may be. So you can, you know, implement some. Uh, you know some of the results into standard operating procedures, uh, and also take a look at you know if you have any automatic controls in your system, uh, you can see what their impact is on on uh, you know transient response. Uh, so you know comparing estimates of surges versus modeling. So um, you know Hammer can import data from existing models. So if you have a water gems model, uh, an EPA net model, water CAD model, you can directly open that. Uh, it has the same exact file format and really the same user interface as water CAD and water gems. Uh, so you, you know you don't have to go about rebuilding a hammer model. You can just directly open your water CAD or water gems model. Um, you could model the entire system as is, or you could simplify it down to a sort of skeleton version of it, which is definitely uh, recommended in, in many cases. Um, you know, some of the other vendors out there may require some approximations or simplifications. Um, if we're talking about the fundamentals of, you know, how do we use Hammer? What is the process of, of setting up a transient analysis? Well, you know, the model in Hammer is made up of the data, the software, and the modeler. So first you got to bring in your data, so it may be in the form of an existing model or uh, some you know spreadsheets or GIS information that you know is used to construct the model. Then you use the software with that uh, with that model data and along with you the modeler you decide uh, what it is you're going to do to do the transient simulation. You have to decide you know which events to simulate and uh, you need to decide what types of mitigation devices you might want to try and, you know, comparing those and uh, deciding on, you know, a, a uh, surge mitigation um, strategy. So uh, most of the time you're going to spend, uh, you know, if you want to do it right, most of the time you'll spend collecting and checking the data. So rather than just, you know, slapping something together very quickly uh, that may or may not be accurate, it's really worth taking the time to make sure you've collected good data and to check not only that the data is correct in the way that you've put it into the program, but also that you understand the assumptions behind the program and how it's using that data and you think about what the model is doing and how it's using that data that you've entered. Um, you know, you should also spend time reviewing, interpreting, and communicating results. So rather than just accepting the results as is, um, you really need to scrutinize them and think about what they mean uh, first to make sure that they're not an artifact of something that was not done properly or, or the way that the model was set up, but rather a, a sort of real result. And then understanding what, is, what does it really mean um, and having that, that sort of you know, click in your head as to um, oh, I understand. Okay, I see what's going on here. This is happening, and then that's happening, and okay, this is a problem here. That sort of thing. Really get that understanding, uh, and then communicating that results, those results to 
um, those that you need to. So generating some good visual aids. Um, garbage in, garbage out. So you know, the more time you spend in uh, setting up a good model, a good accurate model, and understanding that uh, you know the assumptions behind it and that it's set up properly, the better the uh, end results and, and your output will be. Um, you know, you should really first and foremost decide on what you want to do in the model the scope okay you know I'm gonna simulate a pump shutdown or you know this is this is the scope you know we, I have a problem here I need you really need to define that first uh, talk to some people to get an understanding of uh, you know how to of what you want to go about doing in the model rather than just uh, you know starting with some assumptions or not knowing where to start so you can talk to people uh, you know even the operators who may have first-hand experience with uh, with transients uh, and, and you know hear them or, or see their effects um, and again always check that the results are reasonable uh, you, there may be a typo in the data entry you may uh, have not realized a certain assumption or, or a limitation uh, in the model or uh, if you see an odd looking result it, it may be a real thing I've seen plenty of uh, very interesting models where you know um, the user did not think that the result was correct and it turns out well it was it was for a, a valid reason uh, something like a, a vapor pocket was forming that wasn't included in the profile because the path didn't cover it and that was subsequently collapsing and causing a surge and um, you know sometimes you really need to take a very deep look and, and understand those results um, and you know to get started with that definitely take the training as you're doing now and uh, you know that way you're 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 primed with a good solid foundation of knowledge. Uh, read that user manual. Uh, go through the the lessons and tutorials that are that are in it. Um, most of them are similar to the workshops that you'll be going through today and and the other days of this training. Uh, but there's some additional material there, and that's good for practice. Uh, you know, at a later point, if you know you take the training and you don't use the skill for a while, there's always those uh, quick start lessons. And then the links that I included before, uh, the new user learning resource guide has a lot of good information. Um, if you have any other colleagues in your organization that have used Hammer before, uh, talk to them and uh, you know get some tips or you know um, you know use their advice. And uh, if you need help, then technical support at Bentley is always there. I personally uh, answer many of the hammer questions that come through uh, on our forums. So I definitely encourage you to make use of that and post your question. Um, and really, first, uh, check through our knowledge base. We do have a pretty extensive uh, wiki with many, many articles on hammer. Um, some advanced things. Uh, if you're really getting into a lot of advanced transient modeling it's a good idea to read up on case studies um, you know compare to similar systems um, you know transient modeling when you really get into it it does have a steep learning curve there's a lot of you know very um, specific things to transient modeling that uh, you, know, you wouldn't know just by you know setting up like a water cat or a water gems model um, and because there's so many risks involved there when you're when you're dealing with a transient simulation, if you're ever in doubt, you know, read through the, the material that we have and check with uh, technical support if you have to. Uh, you know, we can definitely clarify uh, any assumptions or uh, you know problems that you have. Um, when it comes to WaterCAD versus Water Gems, um, again, you know, they use the same file format, and Hammer really just extends those capabilities to include a transient simulation. So in both, case, both cases, uh, you have you know, full pipes, you're, you're modeling pressure, pressure flow, except with hammer, you have the exception where air or vapor may be introduced. Um, you know, in water cat or water gems, we're really assuming uh, incompressible fluid, whereas in hammer, we're dealing with the effects of that slightly compressible nature, uh, you know, where the, you have the line packing influence there that causes the transient uh, pressure surges and also you're dealing not just with water you're dealing with uh, water vapor and air uh, at times so scenarios and alternatives um, so this is a really important concept especially in hammer hammer is is even more reliant on scenarios and alternatives in my opinion because you're often trying to compare 
um, different surge mitigation strategies or maybe comparing you know uh, without protection versus well let's try a tank here or let's try that there's a lot of what ifs that come into play with hammer uh, so you'll, you'll definitely make good use of scenarios and alternatives and the workshops will give you a little bit of practice with that but if you've already been used to uh, water cat or water gems that'll give you a good good head start with that uh, so there is a, a transient alternative that stores most of the transient settings of the elements um, let's see here so uh, most of you probably already know the terminology when it comes to scenarios and alternatives but basically a scenario is a collection of alternatives and it's you know a single run of the model it's a what if situation you know what if we try this tank well that's that's a scenario where you might have a different transient alternative or if you're using say a different initial status of a valve well that will have a different initial status alternative um, the concept of inheritance comes into play where uh, you can basically create a child of an existing scenario or alternative so when you make a, a child of say a physical alternative then right from the start it's an exact copy it's inheriting all of the physical settings of the the parent but you can make uh, local changes so you can go in and say well this pipe I want it to be this diameter or whatever it may be uh, and that will make that data local uh, to that particular alter alternative and inherit all the other uh, physical properties from the parent um, so this is just another diagram of uh, the uh, process of, of making scenarios and on the right side it's highlighted some of the uh, some of the alternatives that are more frequently used in hammer so you'll see transient at the bottom there that uh, again you know stores most of the transient specific settings initial settings will store like the valve initial status which sometimes you know might start open versus closed physical obvious um, active topology is whether something is inactive or active and that can come into play when you're saying well in one scenario I, I want to try it with the tank in place and in another scenario I want to see well what's what happens without the tank so in the in the scenario where you have the tank uh, present then that's that's flagged as active whereas in the scenarios where you're not analyzing the tank and the tank is basically turned off you'll have that tank set to inactive and probably the pipe next to it um, so here's a little uh, another slide here on transient alter, uh, transient alternative uh, in, in particular so um, basically you can say well here's a scenario where I'm not doing anything my, my existing conditions so no protection uh, and that would be like for example on the on the left side you can see there's a scenario uh, no protection so you might you know set up the pumps to be shutting down but maybe you don't have a, a tank in place or you know maybe that's just the way it is currently um, whereas on the right side we have a scenario where we're trying the same transient event a pump shutdown but we have now included a hydro pneumatic tank you can see that the tank in green and uh, it can be very helpful to compare the results of these different types of scenarios um, there's also a scenario comparison tool that can easily you know track what's different between different scenarios and that way if you uh, are setting up a lot of scenarios and you're not sure what's different between them you can refer to that um, and this is just a slide on you know what you do you basically pick the two scenarios and it shows you which uh, alternatives are different and then you can do a further analysis to see what specific properties are different between those uh, alternatives and there you have uh, an example where it's highlighting uh, some specific alternatives that are different and here are the details of the elements that are different we can see uh, between the two scenarios being compared there's um, a surge tank that has a different uh, different ele initial elevation is the example here and there's also an ability to highlight the differences in the drawing so you can see here a, a screenshot of uh, a plan view of the drawing where the elements that are different are highlighted so it's it's really useful if you start to lose track of you know what what you did in each scenario um, uh, just some basic tips here uh, for data entry uh, kind of uh, mirror what I said before about uh, checking the data frequently uh, it's it's very important to make sure that the data is correct otherwise you might be looking at results that 
are, are skewed by that um, without you knowing. So y you should make sure that you've confirmed that everything is set up right and that you're comfortable knowing that uh, and that you can be that much more confident with the results. Um, so when you're working with the model, you want to, you know, plan out your runs before you make them because uh, then you could end up with a lot of scenarios that uh, you might lose track of if you're just creating scenarios without really planning them ahead of time. So it's, it's a good idea to plan it out first uh, so you're not left with, um, you know, confusion. Um, but definitely try different scenarios and alternatives. I've seen many new Hammer users that will either you know, change things and rerun the model to see what happens uh, within the base scenario and not even use scenarios, or they set up a separate model for every, an actual separate model file for every uh, what if situation. And obviously that's not, that's not very efficient. So if you understand how to use scenarios and alternatives, you can, uh, you know, you can really be very effective at, at comparing different situations uh, in a transient simulation. Um, If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.